I don't know about you, but I am absolutely exhausted by this anti-aging business. Hi everyone, it's Nisha. So today, a bit of a different video, one of our real talks, we are going to be talking about anti-aging. hate this word, first of all, because you can't stop aging. Things should be called aging well or pro-aging. There is nothing wrong with aging and I love getting older but I don't like what it does to my body and my face. And if we're being completely honest, most of us women probably feel the same. Yes, there, there are women that don't care and think that's just natural and I'm just going with it and that's fine too. But I would be willing to bet that if I sat here and told you I've got this pill that you will take, just one pill, and it will make you look 10 years younger, you all take it. Admit it. You would. I think for me and maybe other YouTube creators, this is even harder because... I look at myself all the time. Every time I film, I've got a monitor here to check that I'm always in focus. So I, it's like looking in a mirror. Then I'm editing, looking at myself constantly. And we are quite good at being self-critical anyway. We'll sit there for hours in front of the mirror and picking at little things, wrinkle here, sagging here. So being on YouTube definitely doesn't help. And social media. I actually feel sorry for the young generation because I haven't grown up with it and they are and that's all they see. Everybody is beautiful on Instagram, no one is aging, everybody has beautiful cheekbones, huge lips, perfect body and perfect life. And we know this is all a lie but nevertheless it has big impact on us, especially women, I think. I feel women age worse than men. Men age much better. In fact, I feel that a lot of men look better and more handsome as they age. And I will tell you why that is in a minute. So because of all of that, we as women are so easy to sell. Anything with anti-aging on it, we sprint for it and I'm guilty of that. But do these things really work? That's what I've been lately thinking. Is it all just a gimmick and money-making machine? Probably. 90% of that, probably. Nevertheless, we still try <laughs> and hope this product will be the miracle that will do it. So as you know, I've tried fillers, I've tried Botox, I've tried skin conditioning injections like Profilo and polynucleotides. Skincare. Skincare is a minefield. The amount of skincare I've been buying and using is ridiculous. And I've talked to you about that not long ago in one of my vlogs. As you know, I've simplified my skincare because at some point I was using so many different products that I think I've given myself this, um, is it called perioral dermatitis? That I got really irritated skin and red bumpy skin around my nose, nose and it took me ages to get rid of it. And guess what got rid of it? Stopping using all that skincare and just using one simple cream and I think azelaic acid. That got rid of it, but it took a long, long time. And in the end, I think none of it, okay, I'm not saying none of it works. A lot of those things work, but are temporary. When you stop using them, your skin will be back to normal and you still carry on aging. All you can do I feel is improve the quality of your skin with specific active in ingredients and there is just very few that you need to use and that's that. When it comes to devices, yes, some of them work but again, if you stop using them, you will be back to normal. So there are so many factors that contribute to the way we age. Genes, probably the first one what you were born with, lifestyle, what you eat, do you exercise, do you drink lots of alcohol, smoke. The huge one 
is photo, photo damage from the sun. And of course, my generation, we were never told that. So we fried ourselves in the sun and now we're walking around with wrinkles and sun damage all over the place. <laughs> so sun, um, I think 70% of your skin aging, aging is attributed to photo damage from the sun. And the very, very important one for us women is hormones the depletion of estrogen. So you might remember when I've talked to you about perimenopause and menopause, me being on HRT, how important estrogen is. Estrogen is responsible for every organ in your body. And when it comes to the skin, estrogen is the one that, that is responsible for the thickness of your skin, the firmness of your skin, um, the moisture of your skin, plumpness of your skin, the elastin and collagen production. So imagine when after menopause, you've got none, what's going to happen? And that's where I think we are different from men. Men don't have to rely on estrogen. They have some estrogen, but they don't need it like we do. We need it for everything. Even, it's even irresponsible for our bone density. So that's why you see more women with osteoporosis and broken hips than men. So saying all this, I got so sick of this anti-aging business that I've stopped having any treatments ages ago. I think my latest was that I've tried. And to be honest, I've tried it probably more. Of course, I wanted to see if it made a difference, but I've tried it for you, for this channel, um, because if it was a miracle, I obviously love to share that with you. So I think that was the latest, was the polynucleotides, which are the skin conditioning injections that supposed to, they are not fillers. they just supposed to trigger your elastin and collagen production. Well, I don't think it works. And if it works, it just works if you're doing it regularly every four months. I did the three treatments that you have to do every two weeks and I saw no difference. So I've decided not to do it. I thought it's a waste of money. The same with Profilo. And I'm, I know there will be some of you out there that it works for you, but you are probably having it done regularly. And that's what I mean. These things are all temporary. As soon as you stop doing it, you'll be back to normal. And the money machine keeps turning. So if you are new here, I've had fillers in here, some in my cheeks and under my eyes, now probably six years ago. The, the, I would say that I had cheeks topped up four years ago, but the rest will be at least six years ago. You can always check because, you know, I always share with you everything. Whenever I used to go to have my Botox done or my fillers, I would take you with me. I haven't had Botox for two years now, so I don't have any Botox anywhere. Do you know, the funny thing is I actually was watching, for some reason, one of my old videos curling my hair or something from, I don't know, maybe it was six years ago. And I knew I had Botox because I looked really weird. <laughs> and I can tell any woman that has Botox. But that's fine. If that's what you want to do and it works for you, it's fine. I'm not criticizing anyone for it. You know, I've done it. It's just that I've decided for myself that it is not worth it. So let's talk about Botox. I think... Botox is great. If I had to choose out of any injectables, Botox would be the one. Because Botox will paralyze your muscles, therefore will make your wrinkles disappear temporary. The problem with it is, if you paralyze one area of your face, for example, I used to have mine done just here, so I couldn't frown and here, because of my hooded eyes. I could never have it in my forehead. I, I had Botox about 15 years ago, 
inject it in my forehead and it was the worst thing I've ever done. My forehead looked beautiful and smooth but my eyebrows dropped so much and I have hooded eyes so I didn't want to have hooded eyes even more and that's what happened to me so when that Botox worn off I've never had Botox in my forehead anymore. So in my opinion if you have Botox for example when I had it here and I couldn't frown other muscles in your face compensate for it. So when I used to try, I mean, obviously I can frown now, but when I used to try, you still think you're making this expression, but you do it with a different part of your face. I would do it with this. And I think that then gives you little wrinkles with time here. So basically you paralyze one, one area, but you will probably create more wrinkles in another area that area that has to compensate for whatever you can do i hope <laughs> i make myself clear i love botox because of my hooded droopy eyes whenever i had botox here it would sort of open up my inner eye and when i have botox in my crow's feet obviously it would get rid of the crow's feet and would slightly lift my droopy eye but i don't know if it was a big enough difference to to be worth it so that's botox but i would say out of all the injectables i probably like botox the, the most and of course it wears off after four four five months so and it's been around forever fillers now when it comes to fillers i think they have their role and they are good but i would say after 50 you should stop. I'm a fan of fillers to plump up your cheek. I am fan of a filler to maybe sharpen your jawline. But the under eye one, and if you are my regular viewer, you know how I feel about it, is hit and miss. The under eye area is so, so thin. The skin is there so thin and everybody is different and you cannot predict the result. So I think when you are younger and the skin under your eye is still quite tight and elastic and you have a trough, fillers will work, work beautifully for you. But as you're getting older and your skin starts sagging more and more, imagine it's like an empty bag and you're trying to fill it with something more and more, it doesn't look so good. And also because fillers are hyaluronic acid and they are humectants, they can attract water, then you end up with these big bags. I've been having problem with, I think it's the leftover filler because also we used to be told the filler stays in only for 12, 18 months, but it turns out that it can, the leftovers of it can be there for years and it can also migrate. So your body doesn't completely get rid of it. It gets rid of some and it all depends as well on the type of filler, how thick it was and all that. I don't want to get into um, details, but yes, I think you can't keep pumping filler because you will just need more and more and more and then you will just look like a balloon face and your skin is still getting looser, so then you need more. Let's talk about um, now devices. I've never had a laser treatment on my face, but there is so many different type of lasers and they are not, again, appropriate for, for every person. Some lasers can actually make your skin look worse, can make your dark spots appear more. So I don't know enough about lasers, what is for what, I'm not prepared to risk it. There are some that work for some people beautifully, but they don't for others. So I've never really tried. I, I just had a laser treatment on my chest here because of the sun damage and it did help, but it didn't get rid of it completely. And what I've noticed actually, that now I have loads of little broken capillaries which I didn't have before and I don't know if this is the result of the laser or just 
aging process. Radio frequency devices, because lasers use heat, the same way with, with radio frequency devices. And what can happen? Heat melts fat. So you can start losing fat pads in your face and that is going to make your face sag as well. So that's why I've never used, I don't think I've ever tried radio frequency device, which for sure they call RF devices on my face. Okay, they might, the whole at home devices, RF devices might not be strong enough to heat up your fat enough to lose it, but I don't want to risk it. I want more fat in my face uh, because that will plump my face. Two, um, you know, two devices that I use is the Halo, Zip Halo, which I love. This is not RF device. This doesn't, this is microcurrent device. I won't talk about it, what it does. It basically boosts your uh, ATP. I will leave you the review of it where I talk more in depth about it. But again, this only works if you use it regularly, at least three times a week. I use it more than three times a week and I love it. It has different uh, programs on it with an app. I enjoy using it, so that's why I'm using it. But again, if I stop using it, it's back to normal. And another thing that I really like is the red light therapy. So I have the current body, you know, um, red light therapy. There is actually a lot of studies that this really help again with ATP, uh, is calming for your face. So, and I don't think this causes any adverse effects. So these are just the two devices that I use at the moment and I'm happy with them. But again, if you don't use it regularly, don't buy it. If you're not going to use it regularly, don't buy it because it's pointless. I enjoy using them. I see some difference from it. So that's why I use them. So saying all that, all these things cost a lot of money and won't stop you aging. Sometimes might make you look worse. So I am exhausted by it. That's why I've stopped with fillers, Botox, and recently I've streamlined my skincare and in my opinion you only need four actives in your skin i'm not going to get into argument with people about retin-a the prescription one which comes under the umbrella of retinols so you have the retin-a which is the active ingredient the tretinoin then you have retinals which are retinaldehydes which are weaker than this they have to be converted in your skin into the active retin a retinoic acid then you have retinols which are even weaker um, and they are all great they've been proven for anti-aging is great to use i've tried the retinoic acid the prescription one few times didn't like it, didn't get on with it, will never use it. I know people have had wonderful results with it uh, and that's fine. I've decided, then I've used retinols for a very long time, which will help, they just work slower, are weaker than the retinoic acid. And recently I found retinaldehyde, which is, which just needs one step to convert into retinoic acid so i'm using right now geek, geek and gorgeous a game one zero point one percent retinal serum so whatever is good for your skin and you enjoy using the most any retinol you should have in your routine vitamin c vitamin c is a very powerful antioxidant uh, helps with evening out your skincare, um, your skin tone. So, you know, I've been using the Skin Deva vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid. This is 20% vitamin C for years. Then you need some sort of um, exfoliant. Don't ever use mechanical exfoliants, and by that I mean the scrubs with something harsh in it, you know, I don't know. Um, 
peach kernels or whatever they are because our skin is much thinner when we are getting older and you you probably damaging your skin by that use something like um, natural enzyme like papaya enzyme mask for example chemical exfoliants that just dissolve the dead skin because our skin the older we get the skin turnover is slower and slower so you get build up of the dead skin cells and your skin care then doesn't even penetrate it and it doesn't look very good or you can use any of the AHA acids you know um, glycolic glycolic lactic there is lots of them I'm um, right now using the 12% HAA smooth out from Geek and Gorgeous. So this company, I found it not long ago. It's quite, um, I don't know if they are new, new to me. And a very straightforward skincare with just active ingredients and inexpensive. You know, I've spent in my life thousands of pounds on different skincare. I've decided to go for the simplest. So for example, the ordinary is great for active ingredients. You don't need to spend a lot of money. So some sort of exfoliator, vitamin C, some sort of retinol, and the most important SPF. The one I'm using right now, which I really like, is Summer Fridays SPF 30. In the summer, I go up to SPF 50, and I use that every single morning on my neck and on my face. Now, I'm not going to talk how you should be using it. I might do a separate video on how my skincare routine goes now because you shouldn't be using, for example, HAAs with retinol, although some people do. It depends how sensitive your skin is. So that's a, I have a few other beds that go into my skincare routine, but that might be just an eye cream or moisturizer, but these are just the only actives I, I use, simple, and I feel so much more relaxed about it. So, all in all, what I'm doing now is obviously trying to look after my skin, because I've noticed that also the older you get, the worse the makeup looks on your face, unfortunately, because we have more fine lines, wrinkles, so I will probably have to slowly wear less and less makeup and that's when the quality of your skin is very important, how your skin looks. So that's why I'm putting emphasis on the active ingredients in my skincare. I exercise, you know, I go to the gym. I think this is very important because it again it gets your blood pumping and delivering all the necessary nutrients to every cell in your body. It also builds bone density, so that's very important. I am not a perfect, when it comes to my diet, I'm not a perfect eater, um, but I am quite mindful of what I'm eating. And of course, I wear SPF every day. Now, so saying that, all these things will improve the way you look, but when it comes to wrinkles, sagging, the only thing that will work is plastic surgery. So you could be spending all this money on fillers, Botox, in the end you're still gonna look old <laughs> at some point, and the only thing that can make it make any difference is plastic surgery. I don't think I could ever have a facelift. In fact, I know I couldn't, but I've, <laughs> if you've been with me for a long time, you know that I've been talking about my eyes for about the last 10 years, that I'm going to have my eyes done, but I've never plucked up the courage to do it. But I'm getting more and more inclined to do it. So, um, I always, you know, I do a lot of uh, makeup tutorials for hooded eyes and I forever get accused that I don't even have hooded eyes. So um, I'm not wearing any eye makeup and I think the reason that people think I don't have hooded eyes is because the way I do my eye makeup and the way I talk. I am, my face is very animated and I always talk like I'm surprised and when I lift my eyebrows as high as I can lift them, my eyes are not hooded. 
but if I don't act surprised, you can see I have two creases really. So, um, sorry, I will have to look in the mirror so I don't poke myself. So my eyes are not only hooded, I have all this skin here, so you can see my eyelid underneath here, but my eyes are also downturned. And that is just the shape of my eyes. I was born like this, but obviously with age, everything is drooping, they're getting more downturn. And can you see this skin now, from this hood, goes past my lower uh, lash line. And of course, the skin is very loose, you know, you can move it back and forth. <laughs> when I smile, can you see that fold? Goes right up to here. So when I used to have Botox here, it would smooth it out a bit. Now the under eye area is also troubling me a lot. So my skin... Can you see how it stays where I move it? It's very, very loose. And sometimes, and this is what I don't know if it's the filler that I had here moved down and sometimes it swells up because sometimes I get a little bag here and the skin looks even looser. It just hangs there. Today is not too bad, but tomorrow I could wake up and you will look different. Having eye surgery, it's a bit scary. I know it's like the most profound surgery and a lot of you told me that you were happy and you wish you did it earlier. But when I think about this skin I have here, there is not really that much. If they remove that, my eyes still won't look my eyelid won't look that big because that's the shape of my eye. I think what it is with me, if I lift my forehead, I have no holes. So maybe I need a brow lift, but then my brows will be up here. I don't know. So, in conclusion, if I ever have anything done, it would be my eyes. I think, like they say, eyes are the windows to your soul. I think the most aging you can see in your eyes and also because I love, love eyeshadow. You know this about me and I get so frustrated. You don't understand. It might look easy when I do my makeup but that's because of years of practice. It's something I absolutely love playing with eyeshadow. So this frustrates me the most and obviously the area under your eye makes you look, when it starts going wrong, it makes you look really tired, therefore much older and sort of miserable, if you know what I mean. So let me know how do you feel about this anti-aging business. Are you fed up with it as well? Um, you don't care? whatever it is, but please be respectful. We are not here to criticize for people what they do or don't do, um, because we all have to do what makes us happy and it's nobody else's business. Okay, my lovelies, so I suppose stay healthy, eat well, exercise, look after your skin, wear SPF and just be happy. And if you are not, do something about it. I hope you enjoyed this little chat. Thank you so much for watching and stay fabulous. Bye.